Kansas, gateway to Oz. Under the rainbow, this is where it was. Hollyhocks and red ripe tomatoes, and churn homemade ice cream. Let me tell you, Kansas is more than tornadoes. It's the best part of Dorothy's dream. Today on Around Kansas, we join Deb again in Council Grove at the Voices of the Wind People outdoor historical drama about the Kaw Indians, the Santa Fe Trail, and Council Grove. We'll meet a Native American musician who plays handmade flutes, reenactors, moose, and wind dancer, a whole family of actors, and more. Closed captioning brought to you by Kansas Soybean Commission. The Soybean Checkoff, progress, powered by Kansas farmers. Around Kansas, brought to you by Tarwater Farm and Home. Come on by, we'll treat you like family. Welcome back to Around Kansas, and with me are Moose and Wind Dancer. And we met actually back at the Sampler Festival earlier this year, and it's great to see y'all again. So tell me about Council Grove. Have you been here before? Yes, this is our second time at the Voices of the Wind People pageant, so we always enjoy coming back here. Now, Moose, you're one of the most recognizable people here, <laughs> so or anywhere for that matter. So tell me how you got into this kind of reenacting. Well, I actually started off as an old Abilene Town gunfighter, and I wanted to go more historical. I've met some people like uh, Blue Hawk and some other friends, and I just wanted to go back a little further and teach more. <laughs> All right, so when you started getting into to this era, and tell me about the era that you're portraying now. Right now I'm portraying the plainsmen, the trapper, um, the ones who came over. I've taken a Lakota wife, um, usually around the 1830s, 40s. Now, would you have been French? No. Uh, the thing is, though, I, I portray a person who speaks French, Spanish, English, and the different dialects of the Indians that he traded with. So how did you get into portraying the Lakota wife? Is I'm actually half Lakota, uh -huh. so it, it came naturally, and Wind Dancer is my Lakota name. Oh, wow, so you're not acting at all. This not is just who you are. That's who I am. Well, how does that feel then to be able to, you know, get your own ethnicity and heritage in and have fun at the same time. Oh, it's wonderful. I love history. I've always been a big history fan. So when I met Scott, that just was a natural thing. And we have a blast. We love teaching. Tell me about, you know, the people that come up and, and see the camp. And what, what do you talk to them about? Or what is it you want to communicate to them? Just a lot of people don't understand the things that we do. I mean, we, there's a lot of work that goes into putting <laughs> yeah. up these camps and everything. But we also like to teach the kids that, mainly to, to see and touch and feel. And then when they see, like with me, I do a lot of fire demonstrations where I'll make a fire with flint and steel or a bow drill. And the kids, when they see you can do that, they're just amazed. Well, those are some pretty valuable life skills, too. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> I mean, I've been out in the woods and there isn't too many lighters around, so you just get do with what you do with. Now, did you grow up hunting and fishing? Actually, I didn't. My dad uh, was a ranch manager, and so I grew up doing a lot of cowboy and stuff. But I've always loved this time era, and the more, I, the more I've researched and the more people I met, I just kept doing it. Now, if you could go back in time and live in that era, would you do it? Oh, yeah, most definitely. Really? Yep. Really? Oh, man, I wouldn't. <laughs> I love my air conditioning and hot running water. I, I wouldn't give up that for a lot. Well, believe it or not, with the teepees, there's actually quite a bit of air circulation in them, and we sleep quite comfortable. That was a great design, wasn't it? Oh, it was. We've, we've seen uh, storms roll through to where it was blowing other tents down, and the teepee's still standing. Really? Is that because of the that the conical dynamic? shape? and? Because it'll put pressure on it going down rather than pushing it over. Well, isn't that something? I never knew that. In fact, I'd always wondered when I, you know, the storms are nothing new, obviously, on the plains, and I wondered how those Indian villages withstood those. Oh, yeah. I mean, the, the teepee, it was one of the best designs ever. It's a little bit more work to put up, but we've been in, in, in storms, and everybody's like, uh, we just go in and go to bed. It's great visiting with you. Good we got to go. You. We'll be right back. American innovation is being driven in places you might not expect by people like Brent Hayek, an Oklahoma family farmer. 
who recently set a world land speed record in a Ford Super Duty pickup truck powered by renewable B20 biodiesel. Advanced performance is here, now, putting America on the fast track to more jobs and energy independence. Biodiesel, America's advanced biofuel. Turn to a central national bank ag professional. You'll be a good company. They'll help you track expense lines, manage variable input costs, assess ground agreements, pick a crop protection plan. These times demand ag professionals. Central National Bank. You could profit from what they know. Ag operations run better on Central Time. Central National Bank. Money for life. Member FDIC in your hometown since 1884. This segment is brought to you by Brown Chevrolet Buick in Wamego. Just a short drive down the Yellow Brick Road. Welcome back to Around Kansas, and I'm with Ryan Harjo, who plays the flute beautifully, I might add. So, Ryan, tell me about your involvement with the pageant. Well, I was hired to come and do music before the show, and uh, I've been playing the flute for 30 years now. Um, I uh, travel all through. You must have been like five when you started, or yeah. two, or my something. My dad makes them. Yeah, my, my, my father's a maker. Um, we travel all throughout the United States selling our artwork, and uh, it's a family business. And I'm, I'm glad to be here and represent uh, you know, this, this community to go ahead and do this. And um, this isn't the first time I've been here. This is the second time I've actually been asked to come and play. So I, I'm, I really enjoy this community. It's really nice around here. So, so where are you from? I'm from Livingston, Texas. Great. So, um, tell me about um, your father and you know growing up with that tradition with the flutes and and what that means to you personally. Well, since I was five years old, I've been involved with dancing as a um, as a member of a youth group through an alcohol and drug program for prevention. Mm -hmm. uh, it started in Kansas City through the Indian Center, Heart of, an, Heart of American Indian Center. It was based in Kansas City and there was about 14 children that what we did was we went and gave presentations um, in schools at uh, different events for pretty much Indian awareness and education. Uh, the idea was that if children are involved in their culture, then they won't be involved in other things. Right. And so that's how I got started as a dancer um, and a performer. I've taken it, and I would, I've taken it as my career. It's something I do, you know, for a living. And um, I'm not the only one. In that group of kids, there's about five of us that today still do this. And that's part of our, you know, what we do every day. Wow, that's amazing. That's wonderful to be able to make a living doing what you love. And again, yeah. you know, uh, embodying your heritage as well. Yes, yes, indeed. I, I do uh, enjoy this quite a bit, and I, what I really like to do is educate people. Uh, I have a lot of uh, facts and knowledge that just uh, people want to know. They'd like to know about our culture, and they don't know how to get the right answers. Right. And, and that's one of the issues that's facing Native Americans today. We are kind of um, standoffish, in, in essence, be when people ask questions, because, you know, our, our history is kind of filled with that type of we, we need to protect ourselves type of right. thought process and and so in, in in order for people to be educated you have to have a communication a dialect that you can discuss things with and this is what I like to do I'd like to talk about you know our culture in a way that makes it understandable mm -hmm. and, and less of a um, less of a um, magical mystique -ish type you know, thought process and more of a down-to-earth scientific idea of, of our culture, our stories, and the way that we tell stories. Now, what is your tribal affiliation? I am Creek. Okay. We want to hear um, the beautiful f flute music, so I'm just going to get out of the way and let you play for a little bit. Okay. Thank you so much. Uh -huh. Go right ahead. Now, is this one your dad made? Yes, this is one I made. Oh, you made this yeah, one? Yeah, well, we work together in the shop, oh, so I'll I do see. a step, he'll do a step back uh -huh. and forth, and then we'll split the merchandise up, and then, you know... <laughs> This is a, uh, they're all signed in number. So this is number 2,401 of this particular style of thing. Oh, I see. Now, do you have, you guys have a website where you sell no, online? No, I don't or? have a website. I have okay. an email address, ryanharjo at yahoo.com. Okay. You, can, you can send me an email if you like some of my stuff, and I'll, I'll res respond and talk to you, you know, tell you, uh, you know, what we have, where we'll be. And if we can work together and come up with, you know, if you want a merchandise, I'll send it to you. Great. All right, Ryan, take it away. You can place the microphone right in this area, that way it's 
Like that. Can you? Like that. Okay. Thank you. We'll be right back. Hello, friends. I'm Ernie Rodina. And I'm Don Dawson with the Better Horses Radio Show. For over nine years, we've been bringing the Better Horses Radio Show to markets all across the Midwest. We talk about God, lots about horses. We talk about cows. We talk about horse health. We talk to top trainers. And we even talk about Roy Rogers. We're having a blast with Better Horses Radio Show and would love to take it to a market near you. So visit our website at betterhorsesradio.com and let us or your local radio station know you'd like to hear it in your area. The Better Horses Radio Show is unbelievable. Buying a car shouldn't be this hard. And at Brown Chevrolet Buick in Wamego, it isn't. It's actually awesome. Whether you want a new or used car or truck, Toby's team can make the deal. Even if you want to custom order a new car or truck, Toby's team can make the deal. See Toby's team at Brown Chevrolet Buick in Wamego. We're awesome. Valley Vet Supply is devoted to providing information and professional quality products at reasonable prices. Around Kansas, brought to you by Santa Fe Trail Meats in Overbrook, or visit us online at sftmeats.com. Welcome back to Around Kansas, and with me is Paul Houston, or as he's called here, Foxco. And Paul, this is his first year to be at Council Grove, so what do you think so far? Oh, it's great. Yeah, with all the, the Native Americans and the regalia, it's, a, it's quite a bit different than what we usually do, at least what I usually do. Uh, so you are um, part of the Muzzle Loading Association? Tell me about that. Yes, it's a Kansas Muzzle Loading Association. Um, and we're an organization who uh, try to promote um, the uh, historical aspects of uh, buck skinning and, um, and you know a mountain man kind of living and that kind of type of thing. We work a lot with uh, children and uh, well, just anybody who'll come out and and want to spend some time with this and see how the pioneers used to live. Well, when we talk about mountain man, that's um not exactly accurate you know the kansas territory and then earlier would have gone all the way to the rocky mountains but um mostly what we're referring to is a, a trapping era right that's that's correct uh -huh. so how did you get into that did you grow up hunting and trapping and doing that sort of thing oh sure i did but uh, that's not really how i got into it personally um, after i got married and um, my wife was working with a guy who was a, a gunfighter in old abilene town and they do the cowboy type of shooting, not, not cowboy action shooting. That's something completely different. But it's more of uh, the Hollywood stuntman type mm -hmm. of stuff. And uh, so I went and tried that, and I just I loved it. So I joined them, and I did that for 14 years. And then I, I ran into a group called Chaps, uh, which uh, most of these people that you see today are uh, most of our reenactors are, are former members of Chaps. And, they, and what does that stand for? Uh, Cowboys, Hombres, and Pioneer Society. Cool. What fun. <laughs> yeah. And um, anyway, they, they introduced me to the Kansas Muzzle Loading Association, which is a, a, a huge organization that, that encompasses a lot of different clubs who do different types of, of muzzle loading. And that's where we kind of uh, network and interact. And we do a lot of trading and, and selling of goods. And it, it's a lot of fun. So when uh, 
people come to an event like this and you know they come up to your camp so what do you talk to them about and and one of the things that's always struck me is especially kids everything before them is all equal you know there's no concept that this came before this in history you know what i mean it's all like right. it's all you know if you're 60 years old you might as well have been trapping bear or something you know it's it's all equal it's kind of hard to get that across mm -hmm. to them right well we'll we talk about all kinds of different things you know they usually let us know what their interest in mm -hmm. is whether it's a guns or uh the furs or the the uh the tents or whatever it happens to be and we can talk about that um a lot of it is um pr the primitive uh firearms that we use and, and how to use them and and that they're tools and not necessarily weapons right which is a, a, a big thing for us to to try to explain sure yeah that's a great distinction and it was a very necessary tool on the plains in those early days it sure was yeah well, we've got to go. It's been great. Thank you so much, and we look forward to seeing you again at the next event. Well, thank you. We'll be right back. Tallgrass Commodities offers producers bulk commodities at a reasonable price with reliable service throughout the whole Midwest. To find out more about Tallgrass Commodities, visit tallgrass.us or call 785-494-8484. This hog is Hanover Hoof for meal made from U.S. soybeans. Now, one hog isn't that impressive, but suppose we add another, and another, and another. Before long, you've got billions of hungry customers around the world all clamoring for the same thing. Our soybeans. Learn more about the billion-dollar appetite of animal agriculture at beyondtheelevator.com. Brought to you by America's Soybean Farmers and their checkoff. Car Waters has what you need for all seasons for around the farm and home. Working, hunting, growing, feeding, snow removal, even fun for the kids. And a service department with experienced techs to help keep your equipment in top running condition. Tarwaters has a huge selection and the best prices. Tarwater Farm and Home, family owned and operated since 1978. They have what you need. The Kansas Wheat Innovation Center in Manhattan is rediscovering ways to get improved varieties and new genetics in the hands of farmers faster. Grower-led and checkoff-funded research initiatives are bringing about positive change. This grassroots leadership provides a strong voice in Topeka and Washington, D.C. Now is the time to partner with Kansas Wheat in moving wheat forward. Kansas Wheat Commission and Kansas Association of Wheat Growers, farmers investing in their future and yours. Log on to rediscoverwheat.org. Around Kansas, brought to you the by the Kansas Soybean Commission. The Soybean Checkoff, progress powered by Kansas farmers. Welcome to Around Kansas from downtown Council Grove, and we're here with the Wright family. And unfortunately, the pageant got rained out tonight. We had a heck of a storm here, but it doesn't um, stop the partying from going on and the folks from celebrating history. And the Wright family is in the production. Bless you. And Dennis. Yeah. How long have you guys been in the production now? Um, this is our third time. It happens every two years. It'd be a big production if you did it every year. So we do it every two years. And so in 10, 12, and now 14, we've been in this production. So how did you do the... Tyler, you got to crack the whip. Is that right? In practice, I did, but not in the real play. Oh, no, not in the real play. Doggone it. And so, Carol, what did you do in the play? I'm a townsperson, uh, mingle and visit and, you know, share stories in the town scenes. Now, Maggie, you came all the way in from Spain to be in this, I hear. Yeah, straight from the other side. Uh, yeah, so I've been living in Spain, but I've been home the last, I guess, two times to be in it, and so I'm a townsperson. Wonderful. Yeah. Well, that worked out really well. They don't have to pay for you to come, and they get talent imported from Spain. Now, Kayla, what do you do in the play? Turn around and face the camera so they can see with this pretty girl. All right, doesn't she like look like she should be in like Laura Ingalls Wilder or something? So what do you do in the play? You pick up the can you say how you're a towns girl and you play and do games? So what kind of games do you play? Are they play are they games that you knew before? Like 
like hoops or like tag. tag? Do you play tag in the in the play? Yes. <laughs> so what grade are you in? Kindergarten. You're in kindergarten. You go to kindergarten here in Council Grove. Where do you go to kindergarten? In homeschool. Oh, you're homeschooled. You must be a very smart girl. Are you going to be in the play when you get bigger, when you get older? I don't know. Well, you've got a good end right now. So, Carol, you were telling me, and I thought it was great, about how you moved to Council Grove, and through being involved in this pageant, you really learned the history. Yes. When you come to a town, it takes a little bit of a commitment to learn the history, and especially with Council Grove, and immersing ourselves in the pageant really helped with that. Um, towns, uh, the townspeople, they name streets after them and all sorts of interesting stories. And hopefully people come back again in a couple years and hear the story then too. Well, we'll we we'll really hope that next time the rain doesn't bother us. I know you had a great show last night. I heard great things about it. So folks, put this on your calendar for um, what year is this? 2016. 2016. Sounds a long way away, but it's right around the corner. It's And it's a big crowd, so you all put that on your calendar. We'll be right back. <laughs> is the fast track to more jobs and America's energy independence. Advanced performance is here now. Biodiesel, America's advanced biofuel. Now another gardening tip with Annette Jackson. Now is the best time of the year to fertilize your lawns. The best product for our area is Fertilone Lawn Food Plus Iron. With its blend of fast and slower release nitrogen and a complete formula of minor nutrients, Fertilone Lawn Food Plus Iron provides your lawn with nutrients for the darkest green lawn in your neighborhood. Bring in a soil sample from your lawn for a free pH test. Get your soil recommendations from the experts at Jackson's. Soil is the life of a farm, and for 25 years, SureCrop Liquid Crop Nutrition has helped growers produce abundant quality crops while preserving and improving the soils they steward. SureCrop offers complete soil and plant analysis with cropping recommendations, delivery direct to your on-farm storage, and quality crop nutrition custom blended for your field. Choose SureCrop for the assurance of excellence for your soil. Call today or visit their website for more information. Around Kansas, brought to you by the Kansas Soybean Commission. The Soybean Checkoff, progress powered by Kansas farmers. We're here with Tyler Wright, and it's Tyler's job to crack the whip. And since he didn't get to do that in the actual production, but only in practice, we thought we'd have Tyler show you what he can do here. Now, Tyler, who taught you how to crack the whip? Jesse Masters. And he's a guy from church. Yes. So what was the purpose of cracking the whip? He just had it for fun, and um, I bought it from him and learned how to crack it well. Now, in the play, you crack the whip to get the horses started, like well, for the wagon train, is that they, right? They get it to start it. I just make the noise, too, okay. to go with it. All righty. Well, we're going to let you crack the whip, and I'm going to get out of the way, okay? Wow! Awesome! If, woo! Yes, go ahead and applaud. That's all right. That was great. Good job. So I think you've got a uh, a good career as a bullwhacker coming up. What do you think? Yes. <laughs> Thanks, Jesse. Closed captioning brought to you by Kansas Soybean Commission. The Soybean Checkoff, progress, powered by Kansas farmers. Welcome to Kansas, gateway to Oz. Under the rainbow, this is where it was. Hollyhocks and red rice.
sacked tomatoes and churned homemade ice cream. Let me tell you, Kansas is more than tornadoes. We're the best part of Dorothy's dream. 